It's time for a transition for me, for Cal Sturz. Uh, I've been, as you said, public fund CIO for uh, 38 years, uh, but I'm ready to retire. I'm ready to slow down. Have they found a new CIO? No, they'll launch a public search here uh, in the springtime. Uh, it's a civil servant job, so it's open. Anybody can compete. Uh, and they'll uh, have a full search committee. Uh, this is well planned out. Uh, I've been talking to the investment committee for a couple of years about succession planning. So for us, this is a, a plan that we'll execute and uh, make it pretty smooth. Because you're right, it's been a change. It's first time a change in a long time. And will you be involved at all in that search process? No, uh, because it's public service, I've just, uh, I write the exam and, and uh, help advise, but no, I stay outside uh, and, and I'll just watch the process. Uh, you've been there uh, since 2000 and in that time, you've done quite a bit, not just in terms of just managing money or overseeing that money, but really in terms of tweaking the strategy, uh, not only of what Calsters does, but of course a lot of your peers ended up following suit. I do wanna go through some of those uh, strategies that you've adopted. And let's first start off with that push into private equity and private debt, something that at the time you pursued it was still relatively novel for a pension fund. Yeah, you know, Romain, when I got to CalSTRS, it was a pretty sleepy, simple asset allocation and a really small team. And my goal was to make us a, a global asset manager. And you're right, I told the board at the time, I really thought they could put more into privates, private equity, private real estate. I think our allocation was about 3% to private equity. Uh, they had just hired a new head of the area who came from Canada. I came from the state of Washington where private equity was a key part of the portfolio. And I really felt it could add value. So we set goals, grew that portfolio over time from you know something in the couple of billions uh, all the way to where it is now. It's 16% of the fund and $45 billion. Um, and private markets in general for us is now 45% of the portfolio. So a very significant change in the asset allocation. It's effectively the second largest portion of the portfolio after public equities. Is that right? That's correct. You've got uh, private uh, public equity. Then uh, we're now at 15% in private equity and in real estate. What was the rationale between pushing those allocations higher and higher into the private side uh, of investments. Was that specifically about a better return than what you can find in public equities? It, you know, we're always return focused. It is always about return, but long-term return. So for us, it, what I really said to the board is, hey, if we're a long-term pension plan, which we were, one of the oldest, CalSTRS has been around since 1913, it's, we should have a long-term horizon and therefore we should be making longer investments in things that are private, uh, that have a, a long return and a better risk return profile. So both private equity and real estate really added a lot to that simple kind of 60-40 equity debt portfolio. Uh, how much has, I guess, the investing landscape changed from the time you first entered into the business to the time that you started in Calsters uh, 20 plus years ago here? I, I mean, what is the challenge now for, I guess, maybe your successor or really anybody uh, coming into this space who has to manage a large amount of other people's money. You know, Romain, I have to laugh. When I look back at, and I started in the business in the late 80s, um, it really felt like uh, it was complex back then, but man, is it complex now. Geopolitics dominate um, and, and just, you know, it is a, a very diversified and globally complex portfolio. And I think really, number one, geopolitics, number two, climate change are, are mega trends that are really going to affect the world, the economy, and then obviously our returns. Uh, 